count our blessings one by one. Uh, I think that's the first time that uh, I heard uh, uh, about that song. And uh, I think, Sister Bless, you must have to teach that to us. So teach it to the music team, and the music team can pass it on to us. Amen, church? And indeed, we must uh, count our blessings one by one. And obviously, the greatest blessing that we have is His Son, Jesus Christ, who was uh, given for us. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Indeed, Father God, thank you very much for giving us a blessing, Father God. And although in these current times, the word blessing is somewhat associated as well with many things that is not related to you. But we just thank you so much. We consider it the greatest blessing, O God, to have your Son, Jesus Christ. We consider it as a greatest blessing to be able to gather together in fellowship, to be able to be in one with you. So Lord, we just continue to entrust in surrender our worshiping and our gathering together. And Father God, I pray that you continue to pour forth, O Lord, the message behind the words that you are giving us this afternoon. Father God, it is my prayer that may these words, Father God, resonate in our deepest crevices, will resonate in our spirit, Father God. May it be a message, a one that will help us be transformed in you. In your image, Father God. Lord, your servant continues to humble himself in your presence. Continue to pray that you hide me behind you, Father God. Just continue to pray, O Lord, that you touch my mouth and tame my tongue. Cause it that whatever words that will come out from it, Father God, is touched, blessed, and anointed by you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, again, yes, good and blessed uh, afternoon to each and every one of us and to all the people who are joining us online. Amen, church. I just want to read the same reading that I read earlier on. In Psalms chapter 46, verse 1 to 3, it says in there, my dear brothers and sisters, this is for us. Let us remind ourselves this very promise of the Lord and it is available for us. It says, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. So my dear brothers and sisters, I think it is quite obvious that when there is troubles, amen, when there is troubles, when there is trials, I don't know how you name it, if there is a troubles, if there is a trials, if there are suffering, my dear brothers and sisters, what does it bring us? Isn't it? It brings us that hesitation. It brings us that worry. It brings us that fear. Amen? Do we agree? Amen, church? If there is a challenge, if there is a suffering, if there is a trouble, if there is a trial... It brings to us that fear. Amen? And here it gives example. What are these troubles? It gives a few example. What are these troubles? What are, ano tong mga trouble na to? What are these troubles that can bring, that can instill fear unto us? 
And just imagine, if you are in that situation, would that instill fear to you? Would it bring fear unto you? Just imagine, my dear brothers and sisters, that you are standing in the middle and then you can see that the earth is giving way. If you're standing in the middle and there is a violent earthquake shaking everything around you, amen, isn't it? It will bring fear to us. It will bring worry to us. It will bring concern to us. Amen. It says in there, the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. And suddenly you are in the middle. Then it will bring fear to you. Amen, church? It says in there, though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging, it seems that it talks about natural, it talks about calamity. But my dear brothers and sisters, there will come a day that this will happen. It will actually happen. Amen? And my dear brothers and sisters, if you are the one standing in the middle of this situation, isn't it, it will instill fear. It will instill instill hesitation. Amen, church? Let alone, if you are like our fishermen, they go to the, the sea, they set up their boat, and isn't it, they do not just merely dive into the sea, they check the wind, they check the tide. Amen, church? Because if it's windy, if it's tidy, you will hesitate. Amen, church? So the same thing. That my dear brothers and sisters, any situation, any circumstances that can instill doubt or hesitation in us, my dear brothers and sisters, but the good thing is, it says in there, whatever those situation, whatever those circumstances, there is someone who is ever-present help. Amen, church? And that is no other than God, who is our refuge, who is our strength, who is our shelter. Amen, church? How many times that a sea accident happened in the middle of the sea? And sometimes there is no rescue happening because there are no other, there are no ship within the vicinity. There are no, I mean, there's probably airplanes, but they cannot fly because the weather is terrible. Isn't it, my dear brothers and sisters? There is always a hindrance. Sometimes we are all employees or most of us are employees. Sometimes if we have our annual health and safety training, if we have our, what is that, basic life support training, isn't it? If we found someone in the floor, what is the number one that we must have to do? You must have to make sure that it is safe before you approach. Amen. But glory to God in the highest. Because... Whatever our situation, whatever our circumstance is, there is a God who is ever-present help. Amen, church? There is a God who will not hesitate. There is a God who will not think twice. Amen, church? All we need to do is come to Him. All we need to do, He is our refuge and strength. All we need to do is at, to take shelter in Him. Amen, church? So if we apply it, my dear brothers and sisters, in our natural situation, natural circumstance, what are these times of troubles? Like what we said, calamities, natural occurrences, natural phenomenon. What are these? You know, UK is very lucky that you do not experience the same typhoons that we experience in the Philippines. Amen. But if you live in the Philippines and the other typhoon-prone area, every year, I don't know how many typhoons that the Philippines experience. Amen, church. 
Your generation, our generation experienced the most devastated, devastating earthquake that happened in the Philippines. Amen. And not only that, my dear brothers and sisters, people like in the America, Florida, and all that, yearly there is also a cyclone, there is also a calamity, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. And these are the natural troubles that when the National Weather Station in the Philippines, we call it Pag-asa, when they gave a warning, what do people do? Isn't it they go and take shelter? We go to the evacuation center. Isn't it? Before a calamity, before a typhoon comes, Pag-asa will advise people, oh, we warn people near, uh, near the river, near the sea, to move to a higher ground. Isn't it, my dear brothers and sisters? Yeah? If there is a natural calamity, if there is a typhoon coming, and uh, the relevant people give us warning, we take shelter. Amen? Because it's unwise not to take shelter. Amen, church? Let's put ourselves in Israel. Thank you for praying for Israel. And for those people who are in those war-torn countries, what is the common that they experience, people that are experiencing war? Bomb. Amen, church? Bombs. And when bomb is coming, what do the government do? They sound the alarm. They sound the siren. Amen, church? And that siren is a warning. And if you hear that siren, if you hear that alarm, what is advisable to you? You go to the bomb shelter immediately. As far as fast as you can. Amen, church? So what are we trying to uh, to put emphasis in here, my dear brothers and sisters, is if there is a trouble, if there is an alarm, go and run for that shelter. Amen? If there is an alarm, if there is a trouble, go and uh, run for that shelter. Amen, church? And those are the natural, those are, man, uh, those are um, uh, because of nature, those are because of the war. But how about spiritually? Amen. How about spiritually? The word of the Lord in John chapter 16, verse 33, it says in here, Jesus in here, it says that in this world, there will be troubles. There will be many calamities. In this world, Jesus said, you will go through many troubles. You will go through many calamities. But what is Jesus saying? I am telling these things to you so that in me, you will have peace. So that in me, you will have shelter. Amen, church. In this world, there will be many troubles. There will be many calamities. But in me, you can come and take your shelter. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. What are these calamities? These are just example. For example, you or your loved ones receive a devastating medical diagnosis. Diba? If you or your loved ones receive a, a debilitating medical diagnosis, isn't it? It brings, it instill fear to you. If your loved ones especially very close to you, dear to you, pass away. Isn't it? It is still instill that fear in us. And again, we want to take this opportunity to share the grief of the coronel family as uh, their Lola, Brother Lester's Lola, passed away this morning. And these are the spiritual calamity that can affect us, my dear brothers and sisters. If there is a breakdown in a relationship between husband and wife, between siblings, between family, isn't it? These are calamities. My dear brothers and sisters, what are other things 
that can consider. When we say spiritual calamities, anything that can affect our faith. Anything that can shake our faith, my dear brothers and sisters. Sometimes, if we fall short, if we sin against the Lord, again, these are spiritual calamities. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. Whatever is the situation, I might not be able to enumerate one by one, but whatever is that situation that you feel that can pull you further from God, that you feel that you can make you distant from God, those are spiritual calamity, those are spiritual troubles, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen? Do, do, we, uh, do we understand what I'm trying to convey in here? But you know, the good thing is, the good thing is, it's the same remedy. We are asked to come and take shelter. Amen? Whether it's bomb, you go and take shelter in the bomb shelter. Whether it is calamity, you go and take shelter in the evacuation center. But even here, my dear brothers and sisters, spiritual trouble, spiritual calamity, my dear brothers and sisters, we are invited to come and take shelter. Amen? And that shelter is God. An ever-present help, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen? Meaning, wherever you are, you can enter into the presence of God. Amen. Amen. Wherever you are, you can enter into the presence of God. You can seek the shelter of God. He is our refuge. He is our strength. Amen, church. And the good thing is, the more stronger that hardship is, the more stronger the hands of God be upon you. Amen, church. Parents, protecting your children. Isn't it? If you are crossing the road and there are cars, traffic, you just simply put your hands in there so that your children will not cross. Amen, church. Diba? Very minimum. Oops, hang on. But, if you are walking with them and someone is getting uh, in amok with maybe a knife, maybe with bolo, maybe with something, isn't it? Your grip becomes tighter, isn't it? Because your protection is proportionate to the danger. Ganon din po ang Panginoon, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen, church. The Lord is the same. The greater the challenge, the greater the um, uh, trouble, you can see that the hands of the Lord upon you will be greater also. Amen, church? So we must grow, we must draw closer to Him. This is where He says, an ever-present help because we have our God omnipresent. Amen, church? Omnipresent meaning He is ever present. He is everywhere. Amen, church? Amen, church? We were talking last Friday, Sister Michelle was sharing to us about Lamentations chapter 3 and I think 20 to 23 in there that we dwelt upon. And again, it's another reminder. I believe that the, the line up today that is the theme and what is about that, my dear brothers and sisters, that the graces and mercies of God are brand new every morning. Amen, church. The graces and mercies of the Lord are brand new every morning. Amen. His compassion never fails. Amen, church. His faithfulness never fails, O Lord. Diba? Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. His compassion never fail. My dear brothers and sisters, when are you in need of compassion? Anyone? When are you in need of compassion? 
When you are living perfect in the eyes of the Lord, when you are walking perfectly in the eyes of the Lord, would you need compassion? No, what's the point of needing compassion? If you are walking perfectly in the eyes of the Lord, even the Lord giving you compassion, you will not appreciate it. Amen. But if you fail, and you tumble, and you tumble again, and still the Lord offer compassion, then you will greatly appreciate it. Amen, church? And it says in there in verse 23, it is yung verse 23, Gab, nasabi niya rito, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. You know, if you love someone faithfully, I hope that our husband and wives, I know that our husband and wives are like that. If you love someone faithfully, and then they gave back faithfully as well. Amen? Ano po yung what are we going to say? They say, yeah, that's, that should be it. Ganun dapat. Amen, church? If you love someone, if you, I, 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 wives or husband, if you, 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 you show your love, you show your devotion to your husband, vice versa, faithfully, and they reciprocate uh, faithfully, then makikita natin that Perfect. Amen. Perfect. There is a symbiotic relationship in there. But my dear brothers and sisters, if you became unfaithful and your wife or your husband still faithfully cling on to you, there you will appreciate what faithfulness is. Amen, church. And the Lord is like that. My dear brothers and sisters, who among us in here, according to the word of the Lord in that, uh, uh, you know, the, the John chapter 8, I think, the woman caught on adultery. What did the Lord Jesus said? Let him who does not have a sin cast the first stone. Amen. Who among us in here never failed the Lord? Can you please come and sit in the front? You should be sitting in the front. But my dear brothers and sisters, that is the Lord. The Lord does not reciprocate on what we deserve. Amen, church? The Lord does not reciprocate on what we deserve. The Lord reciprocate. That's why He is faithful because we do not deserve faithfulness. Still, he gave it to us. That's why He is gracious and merciful because we do not deserve it. Still, He gave it to us. Amen. But my dear brothers and sisters, diba? Ang obligation natin, our obligation is to come and take shelter. Amen, church? To come and take shelter. The door of the Lord is always open. You come in knock, and the door will be opened for us. Amen, church. So what is the best way of taking shelter to the Lord? Sa paanong paraan, how can we take shelter to the Lord? I believe that the best way of taking shelter in the Lord is through prayers. Amen. Through prayers, spending time with God. Amen, church. And prayers, it does not necessarily mean, it, it could be that elaborate, but it could be as simple as talking to the Lord. Prayer is talking to the Lord. Amen, church? And that is the best way of taking shelter in the Lord. Amen? Even just simple as, Lord, I feel really vulnerable at this moment. Be my shelter. Simple. Amen, church? Coming from the heart and saying that, Lord, I'm not really in control at the moment. Attending an interview. Lord, I'm really worried and concerned and alarmed. I do not feel confident. Can you be my shelter? Can I draw strength from you? 
Isn't it simple, my dear brothers and sisters? Student, Lord, in as much as I revise, I review, I feel worry, uh, alarm on this examination. Lord, will you be able to grant me your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that I may be able to answer, that I may be able to complete this exam? Taking shelter in the Lord. Amen. And we can take shelter in the Lord wherever we are. Amen, church. A lot of times at work, especially if the situation you start in the day, it's okay, but later on it becomes chaotic. Just come to the Lord and take shelter in the Lord. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. And likewise, say the best way uh, of taking shelter in the Lord is through prayers. And how are we to pray? Again, there is no right or wrong in praying. And sometimes, my dear brothers and sisters, there is no right and wrong in asking the Lord and taking out your trouble. Amen. Sometimes, it's not right or it's not wrong to ask the Lord to, Lord, take these troubles. If we remind ourselves, do we know someone who asked the Lord about that? Do we, do we know someone who prayed and said that, Lord, I don't want these troubles. I'm not really enjoying these troubles that I am in right now. I want it gone. I want it disappear. Do we know someone prayed that? Is so not that what Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane? When Jesus was praying to the Lord and said that, Father, if you are willing, take this cup of suffering from me. But what did Jesus said? But not my will, but your will be done. Isn't it, my dear brothers and sisters? Actually, even Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul prayed in 2 Corinthians, that Apostle Paul prayed that, yeah, for how many times? Apostle Paul said that, there is this illness in me. There is this illness in me. There is this sickness in me that how many times I prayed to the Lord to take away this illness, to take away this suffering from me. But Apostle Paul said that, but the Lord did not answer my prayer because I now understand that the reason that the Lord allow me to continue in this illness, in this sickness, so that I may continue to dwell in Him. That I may continue to come to Him. Amen, church. So, God did not deliver Jesus Christ. God did not deliver Paul in those troubles, in those situations, my dear brothers and sisters, in those suffering. But in the other way around, he reminded them that there is a reason, that there is a purpose of why sometimes we go through troubles. Amen. Because, yes, the Lord can instantaneously take the trouble away from you or the Lord can instantaneously take you out of the trouble, but there will be times where the Lord will allow you to continue on that trouble. Look at the life of Job. Amen, church. Look at the life of Job. How many times, how many prayers, how many cries Job did, but still the Lord allowed him to continue on that trouble. Because, my dear brothers and sisters, the Lord is accomplishing something in the life of Job. And ganun din po tayo. We are the same. Do not think that if the Lord is allowing troubles in our life, that, oh, maybe the Lord does not love me. Maybe the Lord have forgotten about me. I know and I do believe that the Lord permits things because He has a greater purpose and plans. Amen, church? It says in Romans chapter 3, verse 3 to 5, my dear brothers and sisters, that we glory in our sufferings. We glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Amen. A 
Anong verse yan? Romans. Pakicheck nga ano yung quad. We glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Oh, Romans 5, 3 to 5. We glory in our suffering because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Amen. And when we continue to persevere, my dear brothers and sisters, it develops our character. And that character develops hope. And it says in here, hope does not disappoint us. Amen. Pansinin natin, mga kapatid. Kailan tayo nawawalan ng pag-asa? Kailan tayo nawawalan ng pag-asa? There are times that even the trouble is so impossible, even the trouble is so big, even in the, the face of cancer, my dear brothers and sisters, if we continue in hope, diba? it seems that that cancer is nothing. Amen, church? But a simple problem, if we do not hope, it seems that there is no remedy. Di po ba, mga kapatid? So my dear brothers and sisters, that is sometimes the reason that the Lord allow these troubles to us is that we may continue to have hope. Amen, church? May magagawa ang Diyos. The Lord can do something. Amen, church? Only we have to continuously hope. Hope in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters? Amen. Amen. So I encourage us all, na, all of us, let us continue to have hope in the Lord. In the aftermath of all that is happening around, my dear brothers and sisters, we can on, only continue to have hope. Amen. We can continue to have hope that the situation in Israel will get better. We continue to have hope that those um, uh, uh, people who were, um, ano na yun, the kidnapped people will be able to come home. We continue to have hope in the Lord, we continue to have hope in the next generation. We continue to have hope in our community in here. Amen, church. Because the moment that we stop having hope, that is the time that my dear brothers and sisters, na any slight trouble, any slight problems, nag-iiba po yung ating perspective. Amen, church? And it says in here, by hoping, God does not disappoint us. Amen, church? Rather, by hoping, there is a promise of God that it shall be done. It shall be done. Amen, church? In a sense, di ba, the song that Ang umaayaw ay hindi nagwawagi. Uh, I don't know how to explain to Patricia. Um, yeah, the quitters never win. So, if you want to win, do not quit. Amen, church? My dear brothers and sisters, yes, it is advisable. It, yes, it is not wrong to ask the Lord to take away our hardship, to deliver us from our hardship. Sometimes the Lord will grant our request in prayer. But sometimes, like what we've said, 
the Lord will allow us to go through that troubles, that hardship, because the Lord is trying to develop greater in us. Amen. In James chapter 1, verse 2 and 4, it says in here, Consider it pure joy. My dear brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kind, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. So my dear brothers and sisters, sabi natin, what is the best way of taking shelter in the Lord? By praying. What are we to pray? We can pray for the Lord to take away our troubles. We can pray for the Lord to take us away from our troubles. And sometimes the Lord answer that. But for the example of Jesus, example of Paul, the Lord did not do that. Because the Lord showed them that while allowing you in that trouble, while allowing you in that situation, I am trying to teach you a greater good. Amen, church? Yun po yung mensahe. And that's the reason why that James said that consider it pure joy. My dear brothers and sisters, let's put away the word of God. Let's say this word of God does not exist. Amen? And you have a problem. You have a trial. And I come to you and I say to you, magalak ka. Siguro baka sampalin mo ako. Ano? If you are having a problem, if you are having a trouble, and I say to you that rejoice, maybe you will slap me. But glory to God in the highest. Because this word is from the Lord. Amen, church. And the Lord has a purpose in saying this word. Amen. So it says in here, what are we to pray? When we are having troubles, what are we to ask the Lord in our shelter? It says in there we can pray for perseverance, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen, church? And what is perseverance? Perseverance is the ability to endure hardship. Amen? So dapat pala yun yung hilingin natin. We need to ask that for the Lord that in every troubles, that Lord give me perseverance. Amen? Lord, give me perseverance. Amen, church. Because to a one person, he only have one problem. To another person, he have a ten problem. But sometimes, why is it the one who has many problems is the one enduring? Because of the perseverance. Amen, church. So perseverance is the key. Tell your brother, tell your sister, persevere, my brother, my sister. Amen, church. Hallelujah. So my dear brothers and sisters, let us pray to the Lord. Na Lord, if you are willing, take this cup of suffering from me. But if your will is allow to, in allowing this to happen, is for me to develop perseverance, then Lord, let your will be done. Amen, church. Because you know, if you have perseverance, if you are very trained in that perseverance, the good thing that it will bring you is, my dear brothers and sisters, if the same trouble, if the same problem comes, napagdaanan mo na yan. You have already overcome that, isn't it? So you have grown, you have matured. But the second great thing, my dear brothers and sisters, is do not forget, other people as well will experience the same. Amen. And who is in the best situation to give a testimony? Ikaw. You, because you have already experienced that. Amen, church. Who will the Lord use? You. Because you have already persevered and overcome that. Amen, church. That's why sometimes calamity, troubles, it says, let's welcome them. Because they are an opportunity to develop perseverance. They are an opportunity to give a testimony on the greatness of the Lord, especially if we persevere. Amen, church. What is it that we are to pray? We do not only pray for perseverance, 
What else that we are to pray? Let us pray for perspective. What is perspective, my dear brothers and sisters? Perspective is the way we see things. Amen, church? Perspective is the way we see things. Amen? To one person, a problem will say, that's nothing. To another person, the same problem, they will see, oh, this is my demise. Amen, church? What changes? The same problem, what changes? It is, is it the person? No. What changes is their perspective. Amen, church? Amen? And why do we pray perspective? Because it says in here, you are having problem. It says, consider it pure joy. Amen, church? How can you be joyful if you have a problem? You cannot. But because of that perspective, the promise of the Lord, consider it pure joy. Amen. So the perspective, my dear brothers and sisters, is the wisdom to recognize what is God trying to accomplish while you allow you in that situation. Amen. So again, our prayer is not only that we pray for the Lord to give us perseverance, but Lord, I pray that what are you trying to teach me in this situation? Amen, church. Prayer for perspective, my dear brothers and sisters. Again, Jesus is a very great example that Lord, this that you are going, giving me, this suffering, Lord, I cannot bear it. I cannot endure it. But again, prayer of perspective, but not my will, but your will be done. Amen, church. That is a prayer of perspective, my dear brothers and sisters. Perspective, my dear brothers and sisters, can change things around. Again, I'm gonna use the coronel as an example. Please bear with me. I do apologize. Change of perspective as they grieve sa kanilang pagdadalamhati. We can sympathize with them by being sorry of what they are going through. But change of perspective, we can empathize with them not just by simply being sorry, but to grieve with them. Nakikita niyo yung difference? Can you see the difference of perspective, my dear brothers and sisters? Amen. And as a Christian, is that not what the Lord taught us? That we do not just feel sorry, but we have to bear the burden as well. And that is the change of perspective, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen po. Perspective can change criticism to edification. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. It's very easy to point fingers and say, makasalanan, you're a sinner, you're a sinner, you're a sinner. But because of the change of perspective, you can say that, you know, I was once in your situation. I was a worse sinner than you. But the Lord lift me up. Amen, church. A change of perspective. You know, in my, uh, John chapter 15, when we are talking about that vine in the branches, there is a teaching in there that says, my dear brothers and sisters, that those who are not fruitful, the Lord cut them out. But if you look at the old translation, there is a perspective in there that those who are not fruitful, the Lord lift them up so that they can become fruitful. Amen, church? Again, the difference there is perspective. Amen. So again, my dear brothers and sisters, in this world, there is trials and tribulations. And we all go through that. No one is exempted. No one is immune. Amen, church. You, might, you may not be going through one today, but believe me. Believe me. 
Your time will come. <laughs> Amen, church. Your time will come. But my dear brothers and sisters, we can pray to the Lord that, Lord, take me away from this situation. Lord, take this situation away. But sometimes, if that is not working, the Lord is saying, I'm allowing you that. Then, my dear brothers and sisters, our prayer is, Lord, teach me perseverance. Lord, teach me wisdom. Amen, church, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. In John chapter 2, we are going to end now. I just want to drive this uh, small point because think about it. Think about it, my dear brothers and sisters. If you run to the Lord as a shelter, if you run to the Lord because He is our strength and He is our hope, if we run to Him during troubles, my dear brothers and sisters, in serving you a shelter, the Lord will use people who is in that situation already before. That's, that's the, what I want to try to share it to us this afternoon. In John chapter 2, verse 7 and 8, this is the time where, when Jesus turned the water into wine. Amen. Do you think that someone else can do the same? No. No. Even up until now, even up until now, in order for people to turn something into wine, they have to add something else. But this one, pure miracle, Jesus turning water into wine. Amen. But look at this, my dear brothers and sisters. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. Amen. So the servants filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some, some out and take it to the master of the banquet. And they did so. Amen. So what I'm trying to, uh, to let us understand in here, my dear brothers and sisters, is it was Jesus who performed the miracle. Amen. There is no one else. It was Jesus who turned the water into wine. But if we contemplate Jesus as the servants to put in the water. Amen. Jesus as the servants to put in the water. Jesus as the servants to draw the wine. To give it to the master. Just to complete that miracle. Amen my dear brothers and sisters. Therefore pay attention to this. That. When the Lord is telling us that do not fear. I am your refuge in strength. I am your ever-present help in trouble. Could it be that the Lord is calling you as his instrument? Amen, church. Amen. Like what I have said, there is a reason why the Lord allow you to go through those suffering so that you will develop perseverance and then character in hope, maturity. But there is as well that whatever the Lord allow you to experience because the Lord wants you to be his instrument to those other people who will have the same experience. Amen, church. Who is the best to advise people in their problems? People who learn it through experience as well. Amen, church. If you have problems with the law, who is best to advise you? It's Albert Lawyer. If you have problems with your health, who is best to advise you? Our nurses. Amen, church. The same thing. The same thing. So my dear brothers and sisters, to end it up, amen, it says in here that God is our refuge and strength and an ever-present help in trouble. But remarkably, the Lord used people around us 
to be his instrument. Amen, church? Amen? So that's the reason why that yes, Lord, I pray for perseverance. I pray for perspective because I know that you have a greater and bigger plans. Amen, church? Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, let us stand up. Let us please call our uh, ushers. And um, it is the first uh, Sunday of the month. So let us honor the Lord. Let us remember all the great things that the Lord has done through communion. Amen, church. Hallelujah. Praise. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Let us extend our hands to our brethren. Our most precious Lord and heavenly God, thank you that you are remarkable and awesome. Thank you, Father God, that your plans, Father God, are really amazing. Lord, we entrust unto you the lives of our dearly beloved brethren, Brother Lester and Sister Alma, as being your instrument, Father God, this afternoon to distribute these elements. Lord, we thank you so much for their lives. We thank you that in spite, Father God, of their current grief, for their willingness to serve and minister for you. Father, give them a clean hands. Give them a clean heart, O oh God, so that as they distribute these elements, it's as if we are receiving them directly from you. In Jesus' name. Lord, we entrust unto you this bread that symbolizes the body of your son, Jesus, and this drink that symbolizes the blood of your son, Jesus. Father God, cleanse them in the raw form. Bless them, Father God. May they serve to us in your people as you intended to be this afternoon. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. As our ushers distribute the element, I just want us to come to the Lord and say that, Lord, thank you for allowing me to partake of this remembrance. Father God, help me be reconciled to you if there is anything that can serve as a hindrance for me to be united with you for me to receive you in my body. So let's take a small moment to make a small account of our status with the Lord. raise the bread for I receive from the Lord what I also pass on to you the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed he took bread and when he had given thanks 
he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat the bread. Let us lift up the cup. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us drink the cup. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to remember you through this communion, O God. Lord, our prayer is that may we depart, may we never depart in your presence. And may you never depart our company. We pray, O God, that with long life and prosperity, you satisfy us all through Christ. In Jesus' name. My dear brothers and sisters, I have this strong desire na we still have some time. So can we please have some breakaway group for the next 15 minutes. If I ask this group in this side, if you pray for Israel, every, every concern, every matter that the Lord is revealing to you about Israel and about the Middle East, please do that. And on this side, my dear brothers and sisters, is the wider world. What is happening in Ukraine, what is happening, the volatile situation in Asia, and everything that is happening in the world that the Lord is revealing it to you. And here is our Philippines, our country, the Philippines. You pray everything that is pertinent to the Philippines, everything that, uh, whatever it is that the Holy Spirit will reveal to you about the Philippines. And in here is you pray for this country, the UK, including our local community. Everything and anything that the Holy Spirit is revealing to you about this country and about our community. Hallelujah. Sige po. God, if you come and join them here. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise yeah, you can cut it. And of course, if everyone has a prayer request in your group, then pray it as well for them. Okay?